That is BC's health minister, Adrian Dix, who's chairing a meeting of his counterparts from across the country. If you're just joining us now, this is Power and Politics. I'm Vashi Capellos. They're emerging from a meeting with each other, and they plan to meet with their federal counterpart, Jean-Yves Duclos, tomorrow. Their ask is one I'm sure you're familiar with. They've been making it now for months, if not years, and that is for the federal government to increase the portion through which it pays for health care in this country. So they want more money, bottom line, from the federal government to be transferred to the provinces through the Canada Health Transfer. You'll hear there in that line of questioning to the provincial health ministers, the main ask is whether they are willing to see strings attached to that money. For the most part, through those answers, we heard that no, they were not. A little earlier, uh, th they, their comments were precipitated by comments from the federal health minister as he arrived at those meetings. And Minister Duclos said essentially he is willing to consider an increase to the Canada health transfer, uh, but that it would also involve uh, areas of cooperation and tailor-made agreements, so perhaps side agreements. Not a whole lot of detail about exactly what that entails, but he signaled at least a willingness to embark on some discussions of that nature. Here's what he had to say as he arrived at those meetings. We uh, are not engaging into a futile fight on percentage points, uh, tra tax points and transfers. People listening to us and watching carefully what, we, what we're doing together want to focus on what those collaborative actions mean for people. So just before Minister Duclos made those comments, I spoke with Saskatchewan's Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, Everett Hindley. He's at those meetings and we tried to zero in on what exactly the provinces are, are trying to get out of them. Have a listen. Hi, Minister Hindley. Good to have you on our program this evening. Hi, Vashi. Thanks very much. Uh, any movement uh, on the discussion with the, federal, uh, with the federal government on the provinces asked during the meetings that are happening today? Well, we had a good meeting this morning amongst the uh, provincial and territorial uh, ministers for health, also mental health and addictions and other areas as well. Um, you know, and just to continue that conversation on some of the, the actions that are being taken right now by, by provinces and territories and why it's critical for us as we continue to, to press the, the federal governments to, to come to the table to, to address the Canada health transfer issue. Uh, something that we've been very consistent on uh, at the premier's level and also at, at the minister's level and why it's important that the, that the federal government government does to come to the table with uh, with the additional dollars that are required if we're you know going to be in a position to make some uh, significant advancements and improvements to health care right across this country. I guess what I wonder is I, I would sort of assume I think our audience would too that you, that you and your counterparts your provincial counterparts your position would not have changed. Is there any sense that the federal government will walk away from these discussions saying okay you know what we do have to up the the, the tr increase to the transfer? Well, so far we, we haven't heard that, and, and you're right. As provinces and territories, uh, we, you know, we're united in, in that in that ask of, of the federal government, and that's the you know the nature of the discussions today. We're very productive at the provincial and territorial level. Uh, tomorrow we'll be meeting with our with our federal counterparts, the federal minister uh, of health, as well as the federal minister of mental health and addictions, I believe. But again, just to focus on on this issue of of that increase to the Canada health transfer to get the from the the 22 percent uh, figure that we're at right now up to. 30 35 percent it's you know it's a significant uh, uh, ask but we feel that it's crucial as, as provinces and territories that's what we need if we're going to be in a position to be able to, to make some meaningful change and some improvements to health care right across our, our our nation the federal government has uh, communicated that they agree with your characterization that that would be a significant increase and as a result we've read some reporting in the lead up to the meeting you're taking part in that they would like to see some accountability for that money for example some strings attached to any increase to to a transfer i've interviewed some of your counterparts in the last week as well as some premiers and and nobody seems to say unequivocally you know what if we're getting more money we understand there needs to be strings attached what is your position minister would you accept would it be understandable to you that the federal oh. government wants some strings attached to the any extra money it sends your way no, you know, it, it wouldn't. Uh, that's not something that we, we, we would expect. I, I think the, the results are there. We, we've demonstrated right across this country. I know we've demonstrated in Saskatchewan in terms of some of the actions that we're already taking when it comes to not just short term, but also medium and long term solutions to some of the challenges we're facing when it comes to, to health care. And, and each and every one of uh, our provinces and territories have been able, has been able to, to demonstrate that. Uh, previously, they're demonstrating it today in terms of their level of commitment and, uh, and, and showing the results that we're already 
already making based on investments that we're making as, as provinces and territories. And, and I think we have a track record there that shows that we are committed to this. This is a, a, you know, a significant issue and a priority for Canadians right across our nation. And, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll continue to do that. So it's important that, that that funding does follow to the provinces and territories which are best positioned to be able to address health care challenges based on the unique situations they face in, in each of their jurisdictions. With respect, Minister, I do have to challenge you, though, on, the, on, on perhaps the, the idea that you're putting forward that provinces are, are doing a good job already with their investments in health care. There is a crisis in your province specifically, but in other provinces with an exodus mm -hmm. uh, of doctors and, and a difficulty in recruiting and retaining doctors. There are long wait times for surgeries. There are long wait times in ERs. And there was, of course, the pandemic and the experience of so many across this country in long term health care that led a lot of Canadians to question and actually how effective their provincial government was being in making sure the investment in health care was actually, uh, you know, there was actually some accountability there. So again, I ask you, why is it unreasonable for the federal government to say, OK, look, we'll give you an extra $28 billion, but we need to see these types of outcomes, X, Y and Z, attached to that money? Well, as I said previously, you know, we have been making investments and we have shown some, some positive steps when it comes to some of the results that are uh, based on, on actions we've already taken. In the case of uh, Saskatchewan, and I think this is probably the same for, for every province and territory, we know that we need to act very quickly and we have already addressed some of these challenges and have, have taken some steps. In our province, in, uh, in early September, we announced a four-point action plan for health human resources uh, challenges that we're facing to recruit, train and incentivize, retain health care workers into our province and we're already starting to see some of, uh, of those results when it comes to being able to stabilize and enhance health care services right within our province. And I, and I think, uh, again, uh, we need to be able to act quickly on this as well as also look at some of the medium and long-term solutions as well. But I think, uh, you know, our commitment is there as a provincial government. It's time for the federal government to step up to the table with some dollars that are, that are uh, attached to this. And I certainly take your point, but, but again, with respect, I, I, I do want to make sure our viewers are clear that uh, you know, what the federal government is asking for is not to write a blank check to provinces. And I'm, I'm not saying there's any malintention, but we know we've seen the outcome, for example, through the pandemic. We've seen and I know you've come out with a four point plan, but there has still been a decrease in the number of doctors, for example, 8.7 percent working in Regina and Saskatoon from a year ago. I know you have a plan in place, but what the government is asking for is simply not to write a blank check. Why is that so unreasonable? I'm not sure I've heard a specific answer. Yeah, well, well, fair enough, and I, and I think you know what our position would be is that uh, you know based on some of the the, the decisions we've made and, and and the progress that we've been able to, to show that we've made when it comes to to healthcare, I, you know I think it's pretty clear that uh, what we're doing is is starting to work. That being said, yes, yes, there are challenges there, and uh, but we're committed to, to doing that work. And I think again, uh, provinces and territories are our best position to be able to to utilize these dollars and 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 make uh, make changes, make improvements, make the necessary investments investments into, into health care in their provinces. So I, I just think that, I, again, this is a jurisdiction for, for the provinces and territories to be able to implement these programs based on the unique uh, needs of their particular province or territory. And that's why we feel it's important that we still have that, that ability to do so. Just one, one final question for you, Minister, and, and that is on uh, the, the potential outcome of, of these meetings. In 2017, uh, the, the premiers all kind of came with a similar united front and a similar united ask. What ended up happening, though, was the government kind of broke each province apart in the end and was able to deliver pockets of money for uh, home care as well as mental health care. And, and each province ended up signing up individually. Uh, is that a possibility this time around? Or is there a different plan going in for the provinces? I wouldn't say that that is a possibility. I think there's a united front here that uh, we don't see a role for for one-off side deals with with the federal government. The ask is pretty is pretty straightforward: increase the Canada Health Transfer to 35 percent, and have the Prime Minister have a meeting with uh, premiers. Uh, they've been asking for that uh, for a, a number of years now. Um, it's a pretty simple ask to, to discuss simply the CHT and get it dealt with. Now is the time. Okay, Minister, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks so much, Fashi. Appreciate it. That's Everett Hindley. He's the Minister for Rural Health in Saskatchewan. Let's bring in my colleague, Mike Crawley, who's out in Vancouver covering these meetings for us. Hi, Mike. Good to have you with us. I just want to pick up where the minister left off there, and that is on this 
kind of thing that's emerged from Minister Duclos, that, that he may be looking to make agreements, uh, tailor-made agreements with provinces. It seemed like a hard and fast no from Saskatchewan's minister. What's your impression about how that might go over in the next 24 hours? Yeah, well, there, there seemed to be a tiny bit of a change in tone when the uh, news conference actually happened, you know, following uh, what Minister Duclos had said. And so uh, the I, I think it's that tailor-made phrase that's actually kind of got some of these provinces interested. So uh, the way it was expressed by Minister Duclos is that uh, this would allow certain amounts of money to go to the provinces in which they could uh, put towards their priorities. And it's kind of recognizing the idea that the problems that exist in different health systems in different parts of the, of the country, or even just like what the needs are in, in, in different provinces and territories, uh, that, that this could kind of recognize that. So, uh, you know, you might see a, one province decide that what they want is to put money towards having more family doctors, and there might be a, a, another province that wants to be investing more money in, in home care. And, you know, there's no, there hasn't been any real specifics about that. It's just, it's being dangled eh, by, the, by the feds, and uh, uh, the idea of it being tailor-made could potentially be uh, appealing. I certainly didn't hear it being rubbished uh, it, during, the, during the news conference. And, and so let's speak more broadly about the purpose of, of these meetings. Why should Canadians care? Why are they important? And, and what are you expecting to take place over the next little while? Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're talking about these meetings about the health system, uh, these are the politicians that have uh, control, power over how this money gets spent, right? And you're talking $200 billion a year, Vashi, right? It's a mind-boggling amount of money. In other words, like the health systems are gonna spend more than a billion dollars in the two days that, uh, uh, that, that they're here having these meetings. So that's why it's important. And it's important because how that money gets spent translates into the healthcare you receive. And so, you know, th there's definitely some agreement here between the provinces and the, and the feds around that seeing results, right? That they, they agree that they want to see better health care uh, come out of this. And so the dispute over, you know, who pays what share of that is, you know, classic, uh, long-running Canada, federal, provincial negotiations. Uh, but, you know, if there is some signs of progress that, you know, we could see something accomplished here tomorrow is that if uh, the provinces do agree that they'll provide uh, Ottawa with information about how they're doing on these, on these measures, uh, for instance, how uh, how many people have a family doctor or what percentage of people have a family doctor what are the surgical wait times those kinds of things that's the kind of results that uh, federal officials have been telling me uh, behind the scenes that they want the provinces to uh, commit to okay interesting looking forward to your reporting tomorrow thanks mike the cbc's mike crawley for us in vancouver <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.